What is going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and in today's video we'll be learning some more React.js. Now we're going to be creating this Wikipedia search engine. You can see here we have this wiki seeker title here with a simple search bar and what we're going to search for in here, let's say uh, Naruto, hit enter and bam we get a search results of Naruto and if we click on one of these uh, we go to the Wikipedia page for that entry. So this is actually using the Wikipedia API, I guess. Um, and essentially in here, we, like, we can search for anything, Dragon Ball, uh, game. You can search for anything that's on Wikipedia, essentially. Um, I mean, literally anything. Like you can search anything, it'll come up with, what well, if it's on Wikipedia, it's in here. Um, so gaming, you can see it goes straight to gaming, gambling, role playing, tabletop. You know, you got all the stuff, all the gaming. So that's what we're gonna be creating in this uh, video, guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, so we're going to start off with a simple opening up a folder inside of VS Code. You can open this up in whatever you want, but you'll probably need a terminal to do so. Luckily for us, we have a terminal built in side of VS Code. On Windows, I press Control and the at symbol or the uh, single quotes. Um, on Mac, I think it's Control, Alt and T. Um, so yeah, so once you've got this open, we can run MPX create react app and then we can give it a name but in this case i'm going to do docs i want to generate it inside of this yt folder so i'm just going to hit enter and as you can see here it's going to start installing the packages and everything we need for our react project so i'm going to wait for this to finish and i'll see you once that is done okay everyone so that's now done and ready to go you can see it says down here it's all good so the first thing i'm gonna do is going to go into the source folder i'm going to remove a few different uh files here so i'm going to get rid of the app.css i'm going to get rid of the test stuff uh we don't need the logo we don't need the web vitals we don't need the setup tests inside of index we're going to remove the web files and this little thing here um and then inside of our app we're literally going to remove everything with inside the app name here um remove the whole header tag i'm going to take everything i'm going to convert it to take the spaces and I'm going to do it in tabs and tab size of four, please, just so it's a bit easier for you guys to read. There you go. So now we're back to the basics. So how I'm going to work this, I'm going to start by doing the markup first. We're going to do all the styling and how it looks first. Well, basically the structure. Then we're going to add in some CSS, make it look nice. And then finally, we're going to add in the functionality. So without further ado, let's start adding in the features. So we're going to start off with a header tag. This is going to hold three items. It's going to hold our wiki or our title so we're going to say wiki seeker it's then going to have a form we don't need an action uh we do need a class name of a search box and then inside of here we're going to have an input of the type search which we don't need a name or an id because it's react and we'll just give it a placeholder set that equal to um what are you looking for question mark and then once we've got that i think we're good for now that's just that up and then under here we're also going to have a paragraph tag which is just going to say search results and this will be what tells us how many search results we get so for now i'm just going to leave it at zero and then under the header we're going to have a diff with the class of results now within here all I want to do is say um, we want to create another diff called result. So this will be a singular result. Obviously, this will repeat in, um, with all the results we get. And the structure of this is going to have a H3. We're going to have a heading title 3. Um, and for now, we can just say uh, title goes here. Give that all. Got a little paragraph. So we'll just do some lorem 10 maybe for now. And then an anchor tag, which would for now just be a hashtag. But in here we'll say read more. Just like that. And for now, that's all good. So what we're going to do is we're going to run npm start inside of our terminal. Hit enter. I'm going to, once this is ran, I'm going to close. Actually, you can see it's going to open up here. We can close the old one there. 
Go back here. I'm just going to close this. You won't, it should still work. I don't think there was any errors there. Oh. Uh, failure to be accessible. Yeah, that's fine. We'll fix that later. So there we go. And now if we go back to the wiki. You can see we've got all of our stuff here. So it doesn't look like much. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in some sparkly diamonds, a.k.a. the, uh, the CSS. We're going to add the sparklies in. So we've got here. The simple stuff here so let's go into our index.css and we do not want any of this we want to start off by giving everything a margin a padding of zero we're going to give it a box sizing and we're going to set it to border box just so the padding and that all works out nicely and we're going to have a font family now this is going to be fire sans um and i'm just going to say sans set now obviously you can use any styling you want this is just a guideline you can this is just to show you how i've got mine to look how it is so again i'm going to add a body background color of uh, gray and then we're going to get the app now in the app we're going to set it to be display flex we're going to set flex direction to be column because we want it to be going vertically and not horizontally we're then also going to say justify content center because we want to bring everything to the middle of the page. And because we're using a flex direction of column, uh, justify content now works on the vertical axis instead of the horizontal. The final thing, we want to set a min height of 100 VH. Now, VH um, stands for viewport height, which means we're going to have 100% of the viewport height. And now if we go back here, you can see it's now sitting in the center, which is nice. Um, we're then going to go to our header here. And in our header, we're just going to display it as flex as well. We're going to have the flex direction as column. We're going to have a line item as center. Now, this will bring things into the middle of the screen. Let's also remove that and zoom in one, just so you can see this a bit better. And there you go. Now, let's get our H1. Now, our H1, we want a really middle ground sort of gray tone, just to contrast with the background a little. Not contrast, but to look a bit better. We're going to have a flex direct... No, sorry, flex direction. We want a font size, my bad, of about 40, 42 pixels uh, should be good. A text transform of uppercase because, you know, we want it to be full caps. And then text align center. That's not text align. Text align center. There we go. And then a padding bottom, not a padding bottom, a margin bottom of 16 pixels. So let's go have a look what that looks like. You can see that's now brought this stuff all into the middle. Our wiki seeker tile looks good. We now just need to start the rest of it. So let's carry on with that. So we're going to have our search box next. And our search box is going to be display flex. We're going to align item center and also justify content center. We're going to give this a border radius of 16 pixels. Um, we're going to set it overflow to hidden. So if anything, try, you know, for the border radius now, it'll help um, keep the input border radius as well. Um, we're going to give this a width of 100% because we want to stretch as far as we can. But we also want to give it a max width of about 480 pixels. Again, you can change this up as much as you want. Uh, we'll give it a margin bottom of 16 pixels. But we also want to give it a transition because we're going to have some um, focus effects going on of 0.4 so we go here, you can see nothing really looks any different because we styled the container. So we need to go in here and say dot search box inputs. Now this is where we're going to display this as a block item. We're going to have its appearance set to none. So it resets all the defaults. We're going to set its outline to none and same with its border. We don't need any of these features. We're then going to set its padding to be about 16 pixels, a width of 100% because we want it to max out. And then also a transition of 0.4. Actually, I don't know if we need a transition, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. So let's have a look. So now you can see that's looking pretty nice. Um, but I want to have some hover effects. When we hover over this, I want it to change. So we're going to say search box. And we're actually going to use the focus within. So what focus within does is basically it will check if we have focused anything inside of this, e.g. the input form. Um, so we're going to be... In, we're going to be focusing this and it will allow us to style the search box on the outer so it's basically a way of coming up traversing up the style sheet rather than going down it and what we're going to do is we're just going to add a box shadow of three pixels three pixels six pixels rgba zero 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 point two um and then a transform of translate y and we're just going to bring it up about five pixels just to make it look cool so there you go so now when we focus the inner input you can see it brings up the whole thing and makes it look like it's lifting off the screen a little which is a nice little feature 
Then our search results, we don't actually need to style that at all. I think it just looks fine like that. I mean, you could probably give it a gray, but I think that's fine. Let's style our actual results now. So down here, we're gonna say results. And inside results, we're just gonna give it a max width. We just don't want it stretching all the way out to the edges. Again, you should probably change this to fit how you want it to look. But for now, I think it's good. And the margin auto will center it. And there you go, we've got it now centered. Um, let's go up to the, if I set a header, we have, let's give this a margin bar of 32 pixels just to push this down a little, there we go. That's looking a lot better. Now, under here, we're gonna have a result, a singular result, um, which will have the width of 100%. I mean, it's a display block, so it will go width 100% anyway, and you don't actually need it, but I add it anyway. I don't know why, it's just a, it's a comfort thing, I think. <laughs> Six Margin bottom, 16 pixels. So just pushing anything down, we're keeping in with relatively 16 pixels, 32 pixels, just kind of a styling rule for me. It's just one thing I've always done. We're gonna give it a background color of white. So we're gonna be contrasting with that background. As you can see here, I'm gonna make it white. We then need a border radius. Let's give it a border radius of about 16 pixels. Again, matching everything up here, trying to keep everything consistent. And finally, let's give it a transition of 0.4 because what we want to do is when we hover over a result, we just want to give it the same box shadow effect as above. We're not going to give it a translate because that could cause some weird things and I ain't prepared to deal with those weird things right now. So we're just going to give it a box shadow. So now when you hover over, you get a box shadow. So you can still click this and you've got those there. So this is essentially a styling. We just need to do a few more things. We need to say result H3. We'll give it a color of, again, the 888, which we had before, um, a font size of about 28 pixels, and a margin bottom of, again, 16 pixels. We're then going to go under here and say result P. This time we're going to sell the paragraph tag. We do not need detail date there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a color of a dark gray, um, a font size of about 18 pixels, just to bring it up a little bit. And then a margin bar off again, 16 pixels, keeping consistent throughout. Um, oh, we need a ending tag there. Let's bring this up a little because it's looking a bit weird. There we go. Now under here, we just need a result A. And we're going to display this button as an inline block or this anchor tag. Um, we're going to give it a padding of 12 pixels, 16 pixels. So I never think the height should be the same. Um, we're going to give it the background color. And I'm going to set this to be one of my nice colors. So we're going to say... A84FFF. It's a nice little purple. Um, and then we're going to give it a color of white, of course, to contrast with that background. Let's just give it a white color there. Let's give it a font weight of 700 to make it bold. Um, a text decoration of none. And finally, let's give it a border radius. Oh, that's not, that's just a border. We want a border radius off again. Uh, let's go 12 pixels. So we're trying to keep it consistent with our heights here because that will make it look a bit more consistent. And then we give a transition of the same 0 0.4. We can then say result A on Huffer. We just want to set the background color to be basically the refer to this. So we're going to say FF 4F A8, just like that. And that's going to give us a pink. So now if we refresh, you can see there we go now this is all styled it's looking nice and there you go so that is basically the styling we want to go for for this little project here so that's it for the styling now we need to actually come on to the functionality so let's close the index.css we can close the index.js as well and now we're back in here so there's a few things we need to pull well there's one we need to bring through um use state so in react we have oh we need to import um use state from react and inside of our function here we can just say const and we can set our variable so we're going to want a search which will be the, what our search input is our query so we're going to say set search and we're going to set this equal to use state and this is going to be a default of an empty string we're then going to have another one called results and this goes set results and this is going to be what we get back from the um, Wikipedia. Uh, it's going to be an array we get back from the Wikipedia search query or response. And then finally, we're just going to get a search info and set search info state, which is going to say use state. 
and then here we're just going to sell it to some curly braces so what we're doing here is use state will set our variables so we've got our search and our set search our results and our set results and our search info and our search you know set search info now what we want to do is basically inside of our input here let's break this down because we're going to need to do some uh adding some extra layers here and underneath placeholder we want to set our value to using curly braces be equal to our search value here now this is going to error when we want to actually type in it you can see we can't actually type in it anymore and if i open up the console uh you'll see we have some errors here so let's go and fix those so when we type this isn't going to work so what we need to do is go back and we actually need to say on change. So the on change parameter will take through the event. And what we can do is say set search to be equal to event.target.value. And that's basically going to say whenever we change the input, set our search value to this, which is going to basically complete the loop. So now you can see we can type in here, clear it and whatever we type is good nice so we now need an action so we need when we submit our form we need it to actually go somewhere or do so so we're going to say on submit now we're going to use curly brace again and what we're going to say is handle search now what this is is going to be our function up here so we're going to use uh const uh, handle search is equal to a an asynchronous because we're going to be using the fetch api an asynchronous arrow function now we're actually going to pass through here e because we want to basically prevent defaults we don't want the page to refresh we're going to say prevent default and then we're just going to say if search is equal to an empty string we're going to return um we actually need to say triple there and basically what we're saying here is if we don't type anything inside of our input form don't search because else it's going to throw an error we then need to get our end point. Now, the end point is actually kind of confusing or a bit long. Um, I need to find my back ticks. There they are. Um, and it's basically going to be HTTPS. Again, I'll try and put this in the description if I remember. If I don't, I'm sorry. It's going to be a copy job. Uh, Wikipedia.org forward slash W forward slash API dot PHP. Yes, there's a PHP API. Really nice and useful. It works really well. So we're going to give this an action. Now, the action is going to be a query. So we're going to be searching for something. We're then going to say we want it to list the search. Um, we're going to say and prop is equal to info because we want to pass through some info back. And in prop is going to be equal to URL. We're going to say and um, a UTF-8 I think that just sets it to UTF-8 I'm not 100% sure and we're going to say the format we want to return in is JSON we're going to say and origin is going to be set to a star now the reason we're doing this is so we don't get any course issues uh, you know the standard course errors people get and finally, we're going to have, or not finally, but another one is going to be the SR limit is going to be equal to 20. So that's going to be how many we get back per page. So we're going to get 20 results. You can change that to be whatever you want. And finally, we're going to get our SR search, which is going to be equal to dollar search. So this is going to be our search we pass through in our input here. So I know there's a really long string, it's really annoying and it doesn't look very pretty. Um, and you could probably turn these all into variables. Again, I've only messed around with these, uh, these literal um, elements here. Um, so you can see I've added action of query. I don't know what the other ones are. I don't know what the other list is. I don't know what the other formats you can return in. But all I know is this will give us the decide result we want today. So this is kind of what we're looking at. We'll need to look more into the um, API, the Wikipedia API to know more. Um, but I think this is all we need to do, get back the points we want. So here, we're just going to leave that there. And we're just going to now make our request. So we're going to say const response is equal to, and then we're going to say await, because there's going to be a fetch, um, a JavaScript fetch. And we're just going to pass through our endpoint here. And you can see we can now log our response here. So we're just going to log our response and see what we get. So let's go in here. Let's refresh. 
Um, results, yeah, we've not signed those yet. Let's just say test. Hit enter. And you can see we get a response type course, body, URL is there. And we get everything. It looks like OK is true. So what we want to do is we want to check for that OK. So what we're going to say, if um, not response dot OK. So if there's an error, we're going to throw the error with response dot status text. Now, this is just basically going to say if we get an error, we're going to throw it to the console. Uh, we're going to throw the error up. So there we go. Let's get a we're going to get the JSON from this now. So we've just got to say JSON await response.json and it's going to confer our stacks to json so let's have a look what this gives us here now let's go back let's refresh let's type in anime this time and you can see we get this batch complete uh continue source offset 20 so this is the info i was asking for back uh the query you can see though we get total hits suggestion animal suggestion snippet animal I'm not sure what that means, <laughs> um, but in our actual search here, you can see we get all our results. Uh, you can see we don't actually get a URL. And the reason for that is because Wikipedia uses IDs for everything. So we just need to use an ID. It's called a cure ID and what would or curator ID. I'm not sure which one it actually stands for, but a cure ID, um, which is 800 here, which we'll use to actually get the uh, page. So for now, let's just close that. And let's actually go back in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to say set results to be our json.query.search. And that's going to give us all our search results. We're then going to set our search info to be json.query.search info. And I think that's actually a lowercase i for that. So there we go. We're now going to be able to pull through our elements here. And what we want to do is we want to go back to our paragraph tag here and we just want to cut this and I'm going to use the squiggly tags, uh, squiggly tags, curly braces, um, still a technical term. Uh, and then we're going to say search info. We just want to check if search info actually total, ex total hits exists. And then what we want to do is say if it does exist, then we want to do our paragraph tag else we just want to do that else and then here we just want to say um search info dot total hits right in there and that should now when we refresh here and we type in test there you go you can see the total hits we get so that's the as many results we get so if we type in anime here you can see we get three thousand two hundred thirty two thousand three hundred and thirteen um hits their search results which is perfect so this way we just don't get any errors because we're basically checking if it exists before we display it on screen finally we actually need to loop through all our results now so what we're going to do is i'm just going to leave this here as a template and underneath we're going to do our squiggly braces again we're going to say results dot map so we're going to map through every single result and we're going to pass through we're going to get a result and its index number and what we're going to do is we're just going to use these curly braces again. Now in here, we're just going to say return. And we're just basically going to pass through this HTML here. Bam, just like that. And that will now repeat as many for 20 times because that's how many um, elements we're asking for. Um, so we're going to repeat that 20 times, which is cool. Uh, but, you know, I think we need some title and some content pulling through here. So the first thing I want to do is let's get the title. So the title is going to be result dot, you guessed it, title. Hit save, go back, and there you go. So now let's type in anime again, just because one. You can see we get anime, list of anime, not that one. Um, and we get loads of other ones here. Um, what else we got in here? Let's say uh, Naruto. Bam. So we get all these different ones here. And if we open up the um, thing here, you can see we're going to get this error. Each child in the list should have a unique key called a unique key prop. And basically, all we need to do is say key is equal to, and we're just going to pass through our I here. We could pass through the ID, um, but we're just going to pass through the I. Now, we need to do in our content here, but we're going to have an issue. So if we go in here, and we say result.snippet, and that's what we get for the actual snippet. You can see it's actually just putting HTML in there. It's not actually giving us 
Um, we actually kind of want this to basically sit down. And we can also use this search match class here to highlight um, elements which it matches. So let's go back here. So we need to use something else. Let's take that out. Inside of React, there is a really useful, dangerous HTML renderer. And how you use it is you say, dangerous, dangerously set in a HTML. And there's an actual piece of code. And there you go. You say here and in here, we'll just say underscore underscore HTML is going to be equal to our result dot snippet. And basically, this will print this with HTML. And there you go. You can see that works. Let's go back to our index.css and under result.p, we can say result.p, oh, p, and we can say dot search match, and we can say font weight 700. Hit save. And you can see it bolds whatever we've searched for. So if we just do Naruto again, you can see it highlights the search terms. If we did Naruto Usamaki, you can see we just get the Naruto Usamaki stuff here, Baruto. Um, and you can see there it highlights all the words which we've uh, searched for, which is really nice. So that looks a bit cooler. Um, we could also give them the same color as this. So we could probably do this as well. Give them a little highlight color. And there you go. That looks kind of cool, don't it? Bam. Nice. So now we've got that. We need to actually go to our URL. So how do we get the URL? So this is why I did this like how I have. So I've done a return here. Normally you could just print this straight without actually having to write the return. You could just put that in. But I want to actually process the URL first. So what we're going to do, we're going to use uh, backticks here. And I'm just going to say HTTPS EN dot Wikipedia Wikipedia dot org forward slash question mark cure id and we're going to set that equal to the result dot page id we're given now if we go to our href and we set this to be equal to our url and we can actually set a target equal to underscore blank and a rel equal to no follow i think i think that's right and if we now search for let's say naruto and we click read more you can see it now takes us to the naruto wiki page let's have a look at our console see if we've got any errors um okay so that's what i need to do no referrer not no follow there we go no referrer refresh and there you go let's type in naruto and bam we have no more errors there we go. So let's go to Naruto. You can see it takes us here. If we go back, let's search for something else. Let's search for another anime. Let's say Tokyo Ghoul. Uh, and we click read. You can see it's going to take us to the, when it loads, the Tokyo Ghoul um, Wikipedia page, which is absolutely awesome. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been a fun one to record. It's been a fun one to actually demonstrate. I hope you've learned something new. I hope you're enjoying these React videos. If you are, don't forget to leave a thumbs up smash that subscribe button and i will see you in the next one thank you all for watching this video and peace out